Hi, welcome to another episode of At Adam's Flybox. Today I am going to be reviewing and covering this is um, a saltwater fly which could actually be used in freshwater as well. This is a bucktail. Um, I've used the fish skull um, on it just to simplify it uh, a little bit for uh, beginners. The last episode that I did on bucktails I tied um, bucktail jigs for fluke and it's sort of similar but this is really kind of like the, the fly version. Um, this fly uh, is another extremely versatile fly representing uh, numerous food sources. It could be uh, a shad, um, fresh or salt water. It could be, if tied dark or black, it could be a uh, Achille. Um, it could be, uh, if you're fishing offshore, it could be a, a mackerel or a tuna. Um, if you're also fishing offshore, it could be a, a flying fish. Um, I have caught a ton of mahi, mahi offshore on this. Um, uh, inshore, uh, I've caught numerous bluefish. Uh, I've caught uh, stripers on this as well. I believe I even caught fluke on it. And this is a fly that's relatively subsurface. So... Let me get into this um, really quickly uh, to try and get you guys up to speed. Materials you're going to need today, white bucktail, natural. I will be tying with the Gama Gamagatsu 3.0 saltwater fly hook. This is a reference SL11-3H. And I'm also going to be utilizing the fish skulls here. Uh, just because for beginners it um, it makes it makes it a little easier uh, to tie this fly and and really uh, have it look great and fish very effectively. So to start, what I'm going to do is get my vise over here. Now, normally when you tie and you're using a bead, you're going to take the bead and put the bead on first but when you're using uh, fish skulls you're going to take the fish skull here and it will at the end of the fly be placed over the hook so it will lie just like that and be uh, either epoxied or zap gapped into place so um, also some other materials that you're going to be using or will be required here uh, one of my faves is uh, crystal flash crystal flash is great for all flies it fly whether it's a fly or a lure it just adds that element of shine um, and then I'm gonna tie it so that you can in its basic basic form uh, to make it easy and then I will sh also show you how to uh, tie this fly even better to imitate some other types of bait fish. Um, as I mentioned this is an extremely versatile fly. Uh, it could represent a numerous numerous food sources um, whether it's fresh or salt water and it also uh, catches a large variety of fish as I mentioned uh, Mahi mahi and saltwater, uh, uh, bluefish, striped bass, fluke, literally uh, any predatory fish that sees it will come up and, and, and eat this fly. Um, and in freshwater, uh, because it's a relatively large profile and you can scale this fly down, I always tie flies a little bit larger when I'm doing a tutorial or a demonstration for you guys out on YouTube. Um, guys or girls, excuse me. Um, but uh, this fly right here is uh, probably my favorite um, relatively simple fly to tie uh, and is highly effective for freshwater, largemouth bass, pike, pickerel, um, hybrid striped bass, uh, large trout. Even if you're fishing in the evening, uh, this would be great fly for a large trout, uh, the smaller version. Um, and you know even salmon. 
So let me get started on this. So what I've done here is I have taken my hook and placed it into my vise and starting it at just at the head and all I'm doing here is just wrapping a little bit right at the eye to build up a little bit right around the eye and I'm going to wrap back to as roughly as far back as I'm going to be tying materials in on this fly. Keep in mind um, with the fish skull you have to leave room for the head so when you're tying this fly you're going to want the majority of uh, of the, the the thread, the head of the thread tied right approximately here um, just about a third from the eye. Okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap about just about halfway back on on the hook then going to take my bucktail and I'm going to cut out a batch approximately use these scissors and I'm going to pull out the, the fluff pull out the fluff and soft soft fibers that you don't really want in the fly so the clump size that I like to use, uh, well it depends on the size of the fly that you're tying, but it will roughly be about like that. And again, you can pull out any any long hairs. I, I, don't, I don't like this fly squared, so I won't stack it. And what I'm going to do right now, the top of um, the top of this fly is actually on the bottom uh, and this will represent the bottom as it's swimming in the water so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie in bucktail just about as long as I want it to be for the fly and uh, approximately you know an inch or two on a large, maybe, you know, inch and a half, two inches on a large fly, because this isn't a very long profile fly. And then I'm just going to wrap, cinch, wrap, hold it in, cinch it down, get a little bit of coverage here. And then I'm going to take a couple wraps forward. And you kind of want to build up the head of this just a little bit so that when the fish skull actually goes over at the head, it um, will kind of snug in there, even though you're going to use Zappa Gap or 5-Minute Epoxy. Cut off the tag end. And then I'll just cinch this down. Pull out any strays. Tighten it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, which is technically the top of the fly. Again, with the bucktail, you're just pulling out any of the extra fluffy fibers that you're not going to want in the fly it adds bulk um, that you don't really want and then coming to the back side just yank out any extra long hairs okay and on the bottom which is representing the top of the fly this is going to have to lie on both sides of the hook so and it's going to be the same same length so I'm gonna split it like that come around give it a relatively loose wrap 
and that looks pretty good right there. In its simplest form, this it could be a silhouette fly, and you could tie this off after you trim it and build a little head. Uh, if you were to do that, you would want the head to be at the eye, but because I'm using a fish skull uh, head, I need this to be back further. Get my hair scissors. And what I'm gonna do here is cut off the excess. Try not to cut the mono. And you can substitute clear mono for tying saltwater flies or bucktails. Uh, you could also use, um, sometimes I'll use red thread just to give a little red color around the gills or the, the head plate. And that right there could be, you know, if it was tied to the eye, this could be a silhouette fly. <clears throat> now, I always like to add crystal flash. Uh, it makes everything better, um, more flashy and... Uh, you know, I just think it gives it that more realistic look. So I'm going to take a, a batch of crystal flash. There's probably, I don't know, maybe 20, uh, uh, pieces of crystal flash in on this. And I'm going to tie this in almost as looking like a crest over the top. Wrap it in. Secure it in, wrap back a little bit, secure it in, trim off the extra, And what I'm going to do now is just clean up the the head a little bit and by doing so you're you're building the head a little bit thicker up in here uh, which you're going to need it to be a little thick just so the fish skull stays in place even though you're going to end up zap a or five minute epoxying the head on or, um, it will allow it to fit and and uh, a little snug so once you glue it into place, it, it'll stay. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take more crystal flash and I'm gonna split it on both sides of the hook, approximately the same length as the first batch of crystal flash. scissors cut off the extra again tie it in a little bit on the neat side get all those fibers wrapped in there um, crystal flash and, and the bucktail make sure that everything is laying the way you want it And that looks good. Okay, and what I'm gonna do real quick is this fly, I mean, I could tie this off right now, and this fly right here would be a great silhouette fly. It would act, um, I mean, you could even use this above a, a fluke jig where you have, if you were fluke fishing with a jig, you would then tie, uh, this maybe 20 inches or so roughly you know above your fluke jig and uh, a lot of times you'll get hits on the top um, okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to check the fish skull and see that it is going to be tied in i got i got you know an, enough in there fur and crystal flash for this to be a really good fly this would work. 
and I could tie it and this would be as simple as a pattern as you could get. But what I'm going to do here is I am going to and make this uh, show you how to make it a little bit better. If you're fishing the salt <clears throat> uh, inshore, uh, I like to use this is actually um, flashaboo. And this is sort of a holographic flashaboo. And if you've um, ever seen a killie, they have a, a, a bright strip that runs down the side. And I like to take this and I will tie this a little bit shorter than the actual rest of the, of the fly that's being tied in there because the flash doesn't go straight to the tail on, uh, let's say, Achilles. Okay, we got that side tied in. Then what I'm going to do is take my scissors Cut off the extra, and when I moisten it, it's just so that it keeps the the flash boot together. I'm going to tie on this side the same length, of flash boot. Give it some wraps. Cut off the extra. Snug down any loose fibers. Just pop this on just for, okay. That is just about perfect. Now, there's another thing that I can do to make this fly also um, a little bit better as well, and it just depends on uh, the type of fish you're trying to, to imitate. If we're doing a spearing, they have like a, a, a slightly greenish top, and the bottom is the top. So what I'm going to do in this scenario is I'm going to add a little bit more flashaboo, and this is just uh, like a greenish color. Uh, this also works very well for mahi. I don't know if they think it's like a mahi-mahi baby and they just eat it. And I will tie this at the bottom, which is the top of the fly. And I've got like maybe approximately 20 strands of this in here. And this I will do just a little bit longer than the um, holographic. Ooh. Moisten it, keep it together. Going to tie the same green on the other side here on the top and cut it same length as the other side Pull it back, neaten it up, <clears throat> trim off any extra here, and you can you can leave a little bit because I, as I mentioned, you need to build the head up on this particular fly so that the fish skull will sit on there uh, snugly. And what I'm doing right now is just building the head a little bit so that when I slide this fish skull on here. It will it will fit snugly. Let me just check, see if we are we are getting close to the way that I like it. And you are looking at this fly 
upside down. Um, this would be the top right here, um, and the dark on the top, and then the, the light or white underbelly. So I'm just going to now, since I've got this the way that I like it, give it a couple secure wraps, and I'm just going to tie this off. Give it a couple whip finishes, and we're going to be using uh, Zappa Gap here to really soak in and then allow for, um, to hold this, the fish skull on the head. And again, this fly right here without the fish skull is an extremely effective fly. The fish skull, uh, it just adds a, an additional element of, uh, I guess, you know, realistic uh, minnow look to it. Let me take a look here and see. Everything is roughly the way I like it. Now, a lot of times you'll see me moisten a fly, and that's to pull everything together so I can see what it looks like when it would be swimming and to hold all the fibers together. And this will give you a, a better idea as to what this fly will look like as it's swimming through the water. Now, got to put the fish skull on, but before I do so, I do have to zap gap. I, I'm going to measure the head up one more time and just make sure that it fits the way I like it. And the hook or the eye of the hook should just barely be poking out. There's, you could tie a bunch of wraps in front. I like to glue it in place so that it, it holds it together right at the base of the eye, which leaves you plenty of room for tying in uh, leader or tippet material. But this, this is good the way it is right now. Uh, this will catch fish, so I am going to now zap gap, zap a gap if I can open it. If you find this information uh, helpful, useful, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'll have more fly tying and fly fishing tips um, and, and other fishing. Uh, you know, I live down the shore, so you can't fly fish all the time for everything. Um, but when it comes to trout and salmon, that's I only fly fish to them. Okay. And I'm going to put a generous amount on here because I'm about to press this fish skull in and then that's going to be uh, in permanent and then you want to make sure that the fly or the fish skull if you're going to be using a fish skull it's got an up and a, a downside this is how this should go on this fly slide it back just a little bit and there you go this fly has caught i can't even tell you how many fish i've caught on this fly uh inshore offshore uh you can fish it from the beach you can fish it in rivers you can fish it in night just subsurface um, and and have it doing a little of this uh, you know you're twitching uh, to give it some good action um, and you can tie this in smaller sizes too if you're fishing for freshwater fish uh, if you're gonna fish for large trout at night this is a really good silhouette fly to be using for them thank you very much please again like and subscribe uh, if you found this information useful I uh, hope to bring you more flies and um, tips and, and ideas uh, moving forward. And thank you very much for watching and uh, you have a great day.